Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
O oh, oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Sexagesima is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, chapters 11 and 12. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it if someone makes slaves of you, or devours you, or takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool, I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, and cold and exposure. And, apart from other things, there is a daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and am I not weak? Who is made to fall, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor was king, was under King Eretus, was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was called up to the third heaven, 
whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up in paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So, to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. When a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but to these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Less than one year ago, moments before his ascension into heaven, Jesus departed giving to his church a charge. You could paraphrase the end of Matthew 28 like this, that it was everything to everybody everywhere. That is, everything that Jesus has said and done and won, given to everybody everywhere in the world. From the parable, we see that this is done by the proclamation of God's word and through the faithful administration of the sacraments. That's the way Jesus explains this parable. When he says that the seed is the word of God. And you heard that parable just now, beginning with a sower who went out to sow. And certainly you noticed, and as we sing in our opening hymn, that this sowing was done recklessly, joyfully, almost naively. As the sower did not count loss or cost. He just went about casting the seed everywhere. And it's very likely that as you have been invited to see this uh, sowing from the sower's perspective, you still find yourself troubled. You still find yourself wondering that if you have been sowing too, if you've been giving away what you yourself have received for free, then why aren't you seeing more results? Because it's frustrating when results don't show in your family or among your friends or in your church. It's supremely disappointing when you see somebody excited about this gospel and throwing themselves into it and going to church and Bible study, sharing the word with their own friends and family, only to then see them fall away because trouble came as trouble will and trouble showed that they were not ready for it. Trouble showed that they were running on adrenaline or endorphins. And so they withered away, because though they sprang up quickly, they had no foundation. Maybe it's even harder to see those who do have foundation. Friends and family who should be flourishing. They get so distracted by the cares of this world that they end up being consumed by them. You might comfort yourself with this parable and say to yourself that your friend is just like the hardened road, and that's why the word was so quickly rejected. Or the friend from school must be like the rocky soil. That's why he sprang up quickly, but couldn't last when the pandemic hit. Or your neighbor must be like the ground with thorns. Of course, as they put up their new fence, and they got their new car, and all the other cares and riches and pleasures of this life, wrapped around them, it consumed them. But you have to come down to the reality that dirt is dirt. And no dirt, no matter how rich, has any chance of being anything more, or bringing forth anything more, unless a seed is first put into it. So that's where we start with the fact that dirt is dirt. And instead, we are now brought to cast our eyes on the sower, who goes about his work with reckless abandon. But he's not a fool. He does know what is going to happen. He does know what will occur when seeds are cast on roads and rocks and thorns. What is marvelous is that he plants the seeds there anyway. He's not judicious, picking out only a few small areas, a few small square feet where he thinks what he has to put there will be effective. He knows exactly what will happen when he spreads his word. And he has seen it. Jesus has seen his word preached, proclaimed, and planted, but like a road with nothing on it. Even some who have occupied this pew, the ones around you, they have hardened themselves like concrete. Especially when the word of God is cast, that is cast there, would grow into something that is greatly desirable to God, but not desirable to them. Likewise, Jesus has seen this word proclaimed and preached and planted, and like a seed cast into rocky soil with no depth, He has seen, and we have seen, some spring up with fervor, 
thrilled and exhilarated with hearts on fire until actual heat comes. And then they begin to faint. Perhaps they were happy to be Christians even publicly. But when that would earn persecution or suffering, they shrink away because they have no root. Jesus has seen his word preached and proclaimed and planted among you. And as fruit begins to come up, he has seen us get distracted with all the cares of this world here and the desire for more time and more stuff now, that strange satisfaction that comes from a bake statement or ending the year in the black. These things would suffocate us until we stop growing and bear no further fruit. And then what good would they be? None of this is a great surprise to the sower. For God himself has seen this before. Once he formed life from the dirt of Eden, only to see it attacked and snatched up by the evil one. And from that moment, thorns have infested the ground, rocks have prevented growth, and birds seek to take what is not given to them. And so the Father has replanted his garden. The eternal word has been sown in the virgin's womb, and he has risen up among us. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the root of Jesse's stump, the Word sown among thorns, has borne the thorns of this fallen world on his head for you. And he has suffered under the heat of his Father's wrath against sin for you. And when all of these things have killed him, then the Word was sown into cold and rocky earth and sealed with a stone. The stone he's cleared away. Like any gardener worth his pay, Jesus has cast aside the stone that would keep his tomb shut. And he has cast aside the stone that would keep your tomb shut. And so the grave now bears fruit lasting for eternity. And no stones can prevent the sower from reaping his harvest. For in his resurrection, Jesus Christ, the word sown on the path, he has burst the bowels of the devil and hell, who so eagerly and foolishly consumed him. For Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. This he has done so that no evil or heat or stone or thorn may keep you from growing up in him. Jesus has labored long, preparing the ground, tilling the soil of his Eden, and he's cleared away rocks and birds and thorns. He's cleared away death by his own resurrection. He has cast his own word into you, through your ear, and on you in water. He has watered you in holy baptism. And now he has prepared you, and he has made good soil. Now who he has done all these things by grace, continues to nourish and feed it. This Jesus, this sower who has planted you, and watered you, and tended you, now also feeds and sustains you. For Jesus, the word, the sower, everything, Jesus now this very morning provides you with his body and blood so that you would be forgiven of all of your sins, you would be strengthened in your faith, and also that you would grow up and bear fruit. When you've been tended to that way, you will in fact bear fruit, some 60, some 30, some 100. We don't have to keep count. It simply is going to happen. And the fruits that you will yield, a faithful witness, 
a joyful proclamation, works of mercy and an open ear and loving words and caring hands. All of these things, they are not for Jesus. They are like everything else. They are for your neighbor and for your siblings and your spouse. Just like the sower and just like the seed, the seed scattered in so many places, all of the fruit is for everybody else, everywhere in the world. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. For this congregation, the light of the world, that she would shine in your glory and joyfully proclaim your gospel in this place. Lord, in your mercy. For your holy Christian church, O Lord of the harvest, that you would send laborers into your harvest. Lord, in your mercy. For all who teach the faith, O good teacher, 
especially for Dr. Thomas Egger, as he considers the call to serve as the president of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Lord, in your mercy. For your holy Christian church, O author of peace, especially the persecuted Christians throughout the world, that they would enjoy the freedom to worship you in truth. Lord, in your mercy. For all pastors, O great high priest, especially our bishops Matthew and Timothy, that they would be strengthened in their service to your church. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who serve in government, O King of Kings, that they would serve faithfully according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. For all members of the armed forces, O Lord of Sabaoth, especially Jesse, Alexei, Katie, Elliot, and Esther, for Jason, Jack, Emily, Christopher, and Gretchen, for Gregory, Johnny, and Theo, that they be preserved in faith and protected by your mighty power. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need of your healing touch, O great physician, especially Magnolia, Courtney, Fred, Don, and Beth, for Ron, Jin Soon, Susan, Rita, and Norma, for Vettina, Rosie, Charlie, and Marilyn, for Michael, Betty, Lee, Pauline, Diane, Karen, and Christina, that they be delivered from their afflictions and restored to health. Lord, in your mercy. For all children, O Son of Mary, especially those in the womb, those in danger, and to the orphaned, that they may have life and health, and that we would support them in their need. Lord, in your mercy. For the homebound and the lonely, O Good Shepherd, especially Anna, Bob, and Bayeni, that they would receive your comfort and visitation. Lord, in your mercy. For those who come to your altar this day, O Word made flesh, that you would strengthen our faith, increase our love and hope, and assure us a place at your heavenly table. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.